A reading from the book of Sharak. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over his sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children. And when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins. A house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, 
humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another <clears throat> if one has a grievance against another. As, <clears throat> as the Lord has forgiven you, you must also do. And over all these put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, Love your wives and avoid any bitterness towards them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory when the Magi had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod had died, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. He rose, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Achelaus was ruling over Judea, in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go back there. And because 
he had been warned in a dream, he departed for the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazorian. The Gospel of the Lord. I couldn't but notice that feeling from the women when it was read, wives, submit to your husbands. (laughs) They're like, wives, be subordinate to your husbands. And the women were like, yeah, right. I will not do an extensive uh, uh, explanation of that. It's a very dangerous thing to explain. <laughs> but I will say this, that it is, we should understand that in the context of responsibility, responsibility, the family, our human families, have a duty, our human family that has become Christian, let me put it that way, our human family comes together to form what we call this Christian family. So each individual family is a unit by itself, but we have this larger family, which is a spiritual family, and so different Christian families come together, and we are not just... um, natural or just human families anymore. We are also Christian family or divine family, if you want. So we are that. We are that, that two, those two things. As I said on Christmas Day, God became human. That's the whole point about Christmas. God became human. But God became human not just to stop there, just just because human beings are cute. We are cute. (laughs) But God became human for a purpose. And that purpose is that that God may transform human beings, may change human beings, including all human institutions, including family, human family. That human families may not remain, may not remain selfish, may not remain just for themselves, because families can become that. Families can be so blind that we are not doing justice. But family is supposed to do that. Family is supposed to be the place where you feel safe. Family is the place that you can do no wrong. Yes, you do wrong. They know that you have done wrong, but they'll cut you all the slack. Family. Eh? When somebody says, you're a family, you got it all. Eh? Uh, and they can point out the, the bad thing that you have done, but they won't take it outside. Stays in the family. Family is the place that you are safe. Okay. And that is good, but it should not, that forgiveness, that, that love that we give to family should not stop there. There is a reason why you do that in the family, because you have to see through your family, natural, physical family, you have to see Beyond that, that should be a gateway. There is a purpose. There is a goal. 
So, so family life is a practicing ground. It's a, it's a place where you practice love. Unfortunately, our families, our natural families, just stop it there. It's like, it's like when God chose Israel. God chose Israel. God did not choose Israel to let the buck stop with Israel. God chose Israel so that through Israel, the world will become saved. But God chose Israel to use Israel. So there is a purpose behind that choice. So Israel has to be transparent. Israel has to allow that plan, that love of God, that God is trying to bless the rest of the world with, but pass through Israel. Pass through so the family, natural families have a role to play. And that role that we need to play is to bring God's love to the world. Bring God's love to the world. God's justice, God's peace, God's, God's forgiveness, all that. The family is supposed to do that. But if the human family, the human community is going to enjoy God's love, then God needs our families. And if our families are needed, then every member of our families must cooperate, must sign on, must not reject this plan that God has for the world, of which each family is an agent. Each family is an agent. And I'm saying all of us, even those who live alone, if you are living alone, and some people come to me and say, Father, I am not, I, I, am, I have no family, I, I live on my own. Still, once you are human, you are family. There's no one who dropped from the sky. All of us came from somebody. And all of us are related. We, have, we are related. And that relationship, the bond that binds us with other human beings is this humanity. You are part of the human world, so you are not alone, even though you are physically living by yourself. You still talk to other human beings. You depend on other human beings you interact. You can form a family from that. You can look at that as a family, your human family. And since you are human, you are called upon to be the means by which God's grace, uh, God's justice will come to the world. So, so on the fourth Sunday of Advent, I told you about the fact that God chose human beings to play different roles, human families. And we know about Joseph, that on the fourth Sunday, we know Joseph was called to marry Mary, not to run away from Mary, but to marry Mary, so that, so that the plan can come through, God's plan can come through. Today we see Joseph playing the role, playing his, his uh, making sure that his responsibility is carried out. His responsibility is to protect to protect justice, peace, which is Jesus. To protect that love, to offer protection to, the, to, to, to that love of God that is coming into the world so that that justice is not killed by Herod. By, when Herod was seeking to kill Jesus, he was seeking to, to stop Jesus from bringing the love, from dying for us, from forgiving us. So Joseph was that secret service. That is his job, secret service. I can't but see him like that. Joseph was a secret service for, for justice, to protect Jesus, to offer protection. And, and God always gave him the intelligence. God always tipped Joseph in a dream. 
in a dream. Everything was in a dream for Joseph. God always tipped him so that he can have the intelligence to play his protective role for the Holy Family. He always was told in a dream to do something. And when he woke up, he did what God told him. That is his role. That is our role. That is the, the job that a family should do. A family should protect justice, should bring peace. By loving themselves, they bring it out to love the world. We know about Mary too. We know about Jesus. Jesus is peace and justice himself. So this family is called Holy Family because each of the members of that family yielded to God's plan. Each of those members. And that is what our human families are called upon to do. That every member, whether you're a child, whether you're a father, you're a mother, you cooperate and make sure that the plan of God comes through your family life. The plan of God. The plan of God is to bring love to the world. That your family is bringing that love, is being the channel, is being the agent of God's love. That is how our families become holy. The holy is about letting our lives, letting our choices, letting our responsibilities be to bring God's plan about, to hatch God's plan. God's plan that was given to us on Christmas, we now bring that love to the rest of the world. And the family is a very important agent here. In our church here, even if you don't have a, a physical family, you have a church family. You have the family here. This is why we have ministries, brothers and sisters. We have ministries in the church. When we come here and gather, for instance, there are a lot of people who work behind the scenes to make this possible. They are ministers. They are people who have prepared, who have prepared music for us to make our celebration good, uh, inspiring. There are people who prepare coffee and donuts right after here that we can have, continue having fellowship those are all very important ministries. The mass begins when you got out of the parking lot all the way till you get back home. Even it goes beyond that. So everything that anybody does for you is Jesus, again, is that allowing uh, God's plan, God's love to flow to everyone through everyone. And then, when we get back home, we're able to bring this love to the world. We pray that the example of the Holy Family, how Joseph cooperated with Mary and Jesus, and they all worked together to make sure that Jesus actually came to this world and died for us and saved us, uh, become ours too, so that our families may be called holy. May God bless all of us and Happy New Year.